So we're learning the basics of solving the systems of equations. Anybody remind me what a system of equations is? Well, it's a real simple thing. A system of, there's an equation, right? And the equation, you know what an equation is, has an equal sign. Uh, a system of equations. Oh, it's, um, Isn't it just everything that equals that system or whatever? Um, I'm not sure what exactly you mean, but it, by that you mean like just all the equations that there are? Yeah, like for those. That's it. Yeah, it's just like yeah. those equations, right? Multiple equations that are looking to have the same solution, so those, that's a system. Multiple equations uh, make a system. Uh, so to find the, the x and, well, the, what, what does it mean when I say the solution to the system? Right. What's that? Intersection. The intersection helps us find the solution, but it's not quite what the solution so is. Okay, so, so, so an x and a y that I can plug in an equal yeah, one. Equal something, and that's what the solutions are. The x and the y. Are the okay, so that you've described a solution to the second equation. What's the solution to that system? So where the the uh, they're all solutions. The x and yeah, so like there's infinite numbers of solutions for this guy here. There's infinite numbers of solutions for this guy here. Um, this one or this one is for this equation, and uh, it has infinitely many solutions. Any point on this line, right, anything that I pick like this one, zero one, I can plug in zero and one, and it'll be true. If I pick this guy, uh, one, two, three, four, four, zero, and I put a four and a zero, that one will be true. Right? And there's tons of combinations of x's and y's that work. This one is, a, is on this line. It's also on this line. So the solution right, is an x and a y that works for both. So there is one uh, combination of x and y that the same x goes here as here, and the same y goes here and here, and they both are true at the same time. And the graphs can show us that we're only going to have one at most. Unless we have infinity solutions, which just means we have the same equation twice. Uh, so we're looking for that x and that y, and just from the explanation I just gave, right, this is of all the points on this line are solutions to this equation. And all the points of this line are solutions to this equation. So this being a solution to this equation and this equation, well, that x and y must work in both. Where, what is that x and y? What are the coordinates of that point? One, one negative three. Okay, and how can I be sure that that's correct? Right. Going over one and down three. How does that, how is going over one down three tell me, okay, that's, I can be sure that that's where it is. How can I be sure that's the solution to the system? Plug, plug in for x and y. Plug in for x and y, exactly. Uh, so x is one, y is negative three, right? So it's minus negative three. One plus three is four, so that's like it should be. Try for the second equation, grab a different color. Four times, what was it? One for x plus, negative three for y, four minus three is one, just like it should be. So solution, a system of equations is a simple thing, it's just multiple equations, a solution to that system is a pretty simple thing, it's just an x and a y that works not only in this equation, but also in this equation, okay? And just like a, a vision of the future. There are equations that have more than two variables, you can have three variables. So here's, like, here's one. x 
plus y plus c equals 1. Uh, okay, let's just say that's an equation. We're going to do that together to make 1. Maybe 1, 0, and 0. 2, 1, and negative 2. Then here's 1, 2x plus 3y minus c equals 14, and 3x minus 8y plus 4z equals 12. OK, these are all equations with three variables. What do you think the solution to this system, not, not the specific solution, like, oh, you know, here, here it is, like not specific numbers, but what would it look like? What are we looking for? How would we know we had it? We know we have a solution to this system. You already know how to find this one. Now, how do we find it? Finding the solution to the system is actually pretty tricky. Right? But how will I know if I found the solution? Like if I said, here it is, here's the solution. How would you check and make sure that is the solution? What would that solution even look like? Would that solution look like a, a golden egg? Would it look like a, a, a star? Would it look like what would it be a small bowl of spaghetti? What would the solution to the system look like? Using this as an example, this is what the solution to this system looks like. It looks like an x and a y that solves both of these equations. So the solution to a system of three equations, each of which have three variables, what would that solution look like? X, y, and z. An x and a y and a z. An x, a y, and a z. Is it over pair? So it's an x and a y and a z. I don't know what those numbers are, but if I were to say these are them, these are x, y, and z to solve all of these equations, you would test it by plugging in x, y, and z in all three to see if it works. That's all a solution to a system means. It's just a collection of numbers. If you plug them into all the equations, all the equations get true. Okay. Uh, graphing to solve the system, so I'm going to make it easier on my eyes to uh, graph these equations. So we get y by itself uh, in both of these cases. So I'm going to do this quickly in my hand here. Subtract 7 from both sides and divide by 5. I'll get negative 7 fifths x uh, minus 3 fifths. And this one is going to give me y equals 9x minus 11. Decent set of uh, axes here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let me graph this one. This one will be So the first the black one, it's got a y-intercept of negative 3 fifths. So there is about 3 fifths. Slope of negative 7 fifths, so over 5. And down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here we go, a line between the two. Doing our best to draw straight lines to exactly the right points. It's important. Uh, they're supposed to meet at a particular place, and if we draw it sloppily, they won't meet up quite right. So we're on the, the blue one. We've got a line intercept of negative 11, and we go over 1 and up 9. Negative 11 over 1 and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we can think of that. It's probably right on that other line, don't you think?
And it looks like the cross right there. Where does it look like that point is? It's like one negative two. Now we need to be sure that that's right. And we can be sure by doing what? Plug it in. Plug it in. So seven times one quickly plus five times negative two. That's seven minus ten. Seven minus ten is negative three, just like it should be. Uh, negative nine times one plus y is negative two. Uh, negative nine minus two is negative eleven, which is what it's supposed to be. So we graphed it pretty well, right? And even if we weren't exactly right on, we know that the book, the people who wrote the book, are going to be pretty nice to us when they're trying to figure out where two things cross. They're probably not going to make a cross at like one half and negative. So it looks like about one negative two. We checked it and we were right. Thirty-three. A word problem. Okay. Kirigami is the Japanese art of making paper designs by folding and cutting paper. A student sells large, small, and large greeting cards decorated with kirigami at a craft fair. Uh, small cards are three dollars a card. Okay, so small are three, three dollars. Large are five dollars. So small card is three, large card is five. Um, okay, the student collects ninety-five dollars. Makes ninety-five dollars off of selling these cards. And sells twenty-five cards. The tricky part of these. And we're going to want to start building momentum on right now is writing these equations based on the situation that is described. Okay. It's a system of equations. What Again, what is a system of equations? Uh, so the solution is to, uh, That's a solution. Uh, what is the system? It's all the solutions. Like, one thing and then another thing. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of, right? Uh, it's a, that makes it sound like it's a system of solutions, right? It's a system of equations, uh, right? There's sorry. equations, and you're kind of right, but it, there's a, maybe a little bit simpler of a way. There's the system part of it, right? What's the equation part? Yeah, some equation. And the system part, is just more than one, right? And for us right now, how many equations have we been dealing with? Say any one time. Three. Three. I gave you an example of, of three, but on all the homework problems, how many equations were there in each of the problems? Oh, you mean all the problems that you had? No, just in every one. Each one. How many equations we like? Number. Oh, just twenty. Uh, yeah. How many? How many equations were there in like number 20? And in any other number that you might do on the homework, how many equations were there? Two. So we're going to have two equations. When you have two variables, like how many cards, how many small cards, and how many large cards, you're going to have two equations. Okay. Two variables, two equations, three variables, three equations. That's how it works. But writing these two equations is going to be a challenging part. Uh, you know, it probably should have like an x and a y, wouldn't you think? That, that makes sense. Okay, so what should x represent in this uh, scenario where a kid is selling small greeting cards and large greeting cards? Uh, I don't know what the price is for you. The prices are three dollars for the small and five dollars for the large. But those, I mean, these are things that we know, so we're not going to make x just um, a number 3. Oh, we don't know how many souls, so like x for that. x for the number of small, and y for the number of large. You need to write two equations. We need to like, kind of find two truths in all of this information. So to remind you, the kid is selling the video cards, $3 for small, $5 for large. All together, he earned $95. All together, the number, the total number that he sold between large and small is 25 cards. And x represents the number of small cards, y represents the, large, the, the number of large cards. Okay. So in all that information, all that, that stuff that I kind of boiled down to what you see there on the left, 
from all that, you need to pull two equations, right? So like, when you write these equations, some of that information you're going to ignore, and when you write the other equation, you're going to ignore some different information. It doesn't all go together into one equation. Some of it goes into one equation, and put it together in a different way, and get a different equation. So is there any way that you can see to take like the number of small cards and the number of large cards and do something with that, given all this information? That's, a, that's how many cards total you saw. Oh, okay, never mind. So, that. so what do you guys think about that? Is that an equation that makes sense? No, why does that equation make sense? 5y plus 3x equals 95. What, what's five? What, what's five times y represent? It's so you know that you wrote the equation. Well, I'm asking other people. Oh, sorry, no one was answering. So, uh, how about Cameron? But five times y. What's that? What is that figuring out? What is that calculating? That's pretty much the same. Um, five times y. Yeah. Five y five. What's, what's five? Five is the. Uh, scenario where this kid is selling cards, right. what does five have to do with that scenario? All the pertinent information is written right here. So what does five have to do with it? Well, that's five dollars for each large card. Right, and, and what does y represent? Uh, how many cards he has. How many what kind of cards? Large cards. So large price times large number, right? The number of large cards times the price of a large card is going to be how much money he made from what? From each large card he sold. Well, from all of the large cards. From all the large cards. Each large card is five. You already knew that. The total of the large cards, like the, the, the price or the, the, the profit that he made off of the large cards is five dollars times the number of large then three times x, so that's the price of a small card times the number of small cards. That's going to be how much you made on the small card. <coughs> and when we add it together, those two dollar amounts, we should get the total dollar amount, which we know to be 95. So the total is 95. Okay? So you're going to write another equation, which no surprise is going to involve x and y somehow. And probably, in some way, information we haven't used yet. What haven't we used yet? have not used the 25 cards. So, number of large cards is x, or small cards is x, number of large cards is y. Uh, and we sold 25 cards, so how can we put together x, y, and 25 into an equation? sold uh, you know three small cards and four large cards would you multiply three times four to figure out how many he sold all together mm -hmm. 
25 and the slope is negative 1. So put the 25 there. Uh, this has a, you know, the, you know the easier way, when, it, when your equations are written like this, it's called standard form. The much easier way to graph these ones is to find the intercepts. So when I plug in 0 for x, I find y is 25, 0. So I plug in 0 for y, I find x is 25, 25 comma 0. Uh, when, we saw, when we look at this guy here, you plug in 0 for x, 0 for x, so 5y equals 95, divide by 5, y equals 95 divided by 5. So uh, yeah. uh, 0, 19, well that's 25. So 19 is going to be somewhere in there. And if we put in 0 for y, we get 3x equals 95. And x equals, we'll divide both sides by 3. 95 divided by 3. Okay. Um, 95 divided by 3. So 31 and 2 thirds. 31 and 2 thirds. Okay, so let's see, that's 25, 31 and 2 thirds would be somewhere over there. Okay, well, kind of made my graph, what's wrong with this graph? Like, why isn't it going to be so great to figure out the solution to this system? So the first line is not straight. First line is not straight. It's very hard to read because it's very small. So maybe I should adjust a little bit. Adjust the scale. And maybe draw some straighter lines, or maybe um, I don't know. So let's just draw some really straight lines. which means these are at about 5 each. 5, 10, 15, 20, 19 is going to be right around there. And so one of the lines goes through 25, one of them goes through 19. Uh, this first one goes through 25 on the x-axis. So that's uh, 25, 
5 more is 30. 35, so 30, 31, and 2 thirds, and right around there. Right, so a straight line from the 19 over to 31, 2 thirds. All right, it's a little better. Let me look at where they cross. Where does it look like they cross? Then 15, 15, 10. Pretty good guess. What if we're wrong? <coughs> it's not 15 and 10. So we, we got to check it. And what if we check it and it's wrong? Then we screwed up somewhere. Well, maybe we messed up just a little bit. Maybe we can just adjust a little. Maybe it's not 15, maybe it's 14 or 16. Right. The purpose of including this in the homework is to show you what's not so great about graphing every one of these to find a solution because it's hard to find the intersection for all of these, okay? Uh, but it looks like 15, 10. It looks like 15 small cards and 10 large cards. Okay, let's give it a try. 15, or 15 and 10. So five times 10 plus three times 15. That's 50 plus uh, 45. Is that 95? Is and uh, how about this? Uh, just add them together, right? 15 plus 10 is 25. So 15 small cards and 10 large cards. There it is. So if we want to use graphing, graph both of the lines, find the intersection, and that must be the, uh, the solution. And if we want to be sure, we can plug it in. Let's have your homework. And uh, we'll start a review. Dustin? Just have one page like our whole name. All right, I uh, have color coded in red and blue. So the red one it has a y intercept of negative 7, a slope of 2 thirds. It's over 3 and up 2. And I'll draw myself a straight line there. Intercept of positive six and a slope of negative three halves, so it's going to go to the right two and down three. Oh. And we want it to be blue, so we change it to blue. So I have a question for you. Yes. If it says negative three over two, mm -hmm. are they both a negative, or is it just one one number that way? Only one, because if both of them were negative, it'd be the same as both of them being positive. Negative divided by negative. So, well, one negative one three halves. It doesn't matter. Negative three over two, still negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. Three over negative two, positive over negative, still negative. Justin? Um, the line graph I drew poorly. Okay. Um, but I got seven negative three. Seven negative three, but it looks like from my graph that it maybe should be what? Uh, six negative three. So it looks like it should be six negative three. So. I did mine really bad. Well, that sometimes that well, that's where we're gonna learn better approaches than graphing, right? Graphing, it helped us. It helped us to understand, uh, for one thing, like most systems are gonna have how many solutions? Two solutions? Oh, sorry, okay. one solution. One solution. Yeah, and like they're gonna cross at one oh, place. Right? Right. The x and the y. There's two. Oh, there's two. Yeah. But uh, what we mean is there's one point, right? One combination of x and y. Uh, this one, six negative three, it's gonna work. It's gonna solve the, uh, both of them. Okay. So if we were plugging six there, right, do the math there, we get negative three, plug six in there, we'd also get negative three, even though the numbers are different. Okay, helps us to, the graphs help us to see that there's one solution, uh, probably, if we were to pick like two random lines, it probably be one solution. Sometimes there can be zero if those lines are parallel, and sometimes we've got infinite solutions if those lines actually lie right on top of each other to the exact same line. All right, so today we're gonna learn a better way, okay? And then there's even uh, better, more sophisticated ways than what we're gonna learn today. But we're gonna learn the first of the more sophisticated, better, more accurate, uh, faster ways of solving these systems, okay? Uh, 
all comes down, really, the better you understand what a solution is to a system, the easier this is going to be to understand when I tell you what we're going to be doing. Okay? So let's take a quick example. Like I want to find a solution to an easy one. Like y equals 2x minus 1, and 2x plus y, 2x plus y equals 3. All right, so all we have to really understand is what a solution is, and this becomes a piece of cake, child's play, okay? Uh, remember, what does the solution look like? Don't tell me what the, you don't have to tell me what the numbers are, but what does it look like again? I've said it a few times. It's like two numbers, x and y, and x and y. And does that x and y do what? Able to fit into both. Able to fit into both, yeah, good. So this y can fit here, and this x here, and this y can fit here. Well, where do y go? Is that y? What did I do wrong? Said one thing and wrote another. So that y works there, and the same x works here, okay? And the key here is that they are the same x and the same y. They're the exact same number, the exact same number, okay? So if this is 3, then what's this? If this is 3, then what's this? That's 3. Also 3. Right? Same y. Y, same y's. These are both y's. If this is 5, uh, then what's five, this? Yeah. Well, this is negative 2, then this is? Negative 2. Right? This is 25, this is? 25. You get the idea, right? If this is 6, what else is 6? Dx is 6. And x over there is 6. Okay? So the exact same thing. What I'm about to do shouldn't surprise you too much, okay? Like, could I just, it seems kind of silly, could I just like erase this y and replace it with a copy of that y? Could I just, Can I just, you know, take a copy of, of this y and just put it, put it right there? Yes. Yeah, they're the same. Okay, now that doesn't really help a lot because it's still a y. Okay. But you know what? Whatever this y is, it can go right there. That, like the same thing that this y is, it can go right there. If it's 5, that's 5, that's 12, that's 12. So let me point this out. You know what this y is? I don't know what's 5. I don't know that it's 3. I don't know that it's 7. You know that I know exactly what it is, what exactly it's equal to. You ready to see what it's equal to? Whatever I put here, I can put right there, right? Yes. Are you agreed? I know. Really important. Whatever is here, I can put it right there because they're the same. You know what it is? It's 2x minus 1. Hard? Well, if you get like a log of them, it needs to be equal to how you can give these numbers and that's what x can equal to. Well, if I take this this value of y, this value of y, right? We agreed that this this whatever it was, whatever I was about to write down, could be like plugged in here, right? Whatever, it, and it's just another expression of x. And look what happens when we take this y out and we replace it with two x minus one. Before I do that, I'm just going to really quickly like I'm gonna color code this. Like this is red. Place this like this could be uh, red. Like this red value and this red value are the same, so I'm going to replace this red thing with this red thing. 2x plus 2x minus 1. Maybe I should put parentheses around that, right? Like replace that with 2x minus 1. And now look at this equation. What's different about this equation now? What's that? Not a lot, but there is one key difference that makes it possible. Yeah, x's yeah, and, and no y's. Yeah. yeah, so we can solve it, right? When we have a variable, like one variable, then we should be able to solve that equation. So uh, I like can think of this as being a 1 out here, and distributed by 1, and you get 2x plus 2x minus 1, right? Because distributed by 1, I just get 2x minus 1 again. And 4x minus 1 equals 3. 
add 1 to both sides, 4x equals 4, and x equals, according to this equation, 4x equals 4, then x equals 1. 1, divide by 4 on both sides, we get x equals 1. Now I know x, can I use it to find y? x minus 1. Now I know what x is. y equals 2 times, now I know x is 1, 1, y equals 2 minus 1, and y also happens to equal 1. So what's the solution to the system? y equals 1, well, 1 and 1. one y one. equals 1 and 1? No. Parentheses 1, comma 1. Okay, yeah, that's the solution, right? It's the combination of an x and a y that works in both of these equations. So we call substitution. Why do you think it's called substitution? You're substituting for the y. You're substituting something for the y. We can substitute things for x too. That's more convenient. Okay, let's try it again. That's a pretty cool little trick. Um, 4x minus 7y equals 10. y equals x minus 7. <laughs> All right, well, again. The x's in both of these equations are the same. The y's in both of these equations are exactly the same. So whatever is here can be put here. Whatever's in this x can be put in this x. Okay. It takes a little bit of creativity, you know, to figure out should I replace y with something, x with something? What do you think? Wait. Which is, is there somewhere telling me that y is this or x is this? One of these equations telling me exactly. Y equals x minus 7. It's already set up. It won't always be set up like this, but it is set up nicely where y is given to be x minus 7. We know it's x minus 7. So since it's equal to x minus 7, I can just put it in the other equation where that y is. Okay. They're exactly the same thing. That y and y are the same, so that y must be the same as x minus 7. So 4x minus 7 times whatever y is, which is x minus 7, we have to distribute that negative 7. And now we solve for x. 4x minus 7x plus 49, because I've distributed the negative 7. Now 4x minus 7x is negative 3x. I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. So it's negative 39, divided by negative 3. And x is 13. Now that x is 13, I can figure it to figure out, use it to figure out what y is, right? Because y is uh, x minus 7. y is 13, which is what x is, minus 7. y is equal to 6. So what's the solution to the system? 13 and 6. 13 for x, 6 for y, that's the solution to the system. Okay, let's see if we can be creative this time. Um, okay, well, I'm going to have to help this out here. 5x plus 2y is equal to 9. And uh, x equals negative y minus 3. Dustin, I'm going to do some substituting. Okay. Either I'm going to take some information from this equation and substitute it into this equation, or take something from here and substitute it up here. What would you say we're going to do? Let me just remind you of the previous two examples. Okay, the first one, look, it was really convenient because y is 2x minus 1. So we just took 2x minus 1, that whole thing, and we replaced y in this equation. In fact, because y is the same as 2x minus 1. Does that make sense, Dustin? Okay, so this y is 2x minus 1 because this y is 2x minus 1. And they have the same y. That's 
that we've established over and over about a system of equations. They have the same y. And if this y is 2x minus 1, then this y is 2x minus 1. Same thing here. This y is x minus 7, so this y is x minus 7. We just took all of this, plugged it in for that y, and that's where we came up with this. So do you see something similar here? We can say like, oh, well, this is that, so I will just plug it into the other equation as that. Take two y, two negative y, make negative, two negative. Take what now? Take two negative y, this? Or yeah, take two y and uh, Okay, anybody else have an idea of what we might replace in one equation um, from the other equation? Five times negative y times negative three, because x equals that. Uh, so x, right, see how it says x is? It's telling you, it's telling you what to replace, because it's telling you what x is. So it's just begging you to take this, and since it is the same as x, plug it in the other equation for x. Five times the same thing as x, and this is the same as x, so this here, same as x, so 5 times x, or 5 times negative y minus 3, it's the same, because x and negative y minus 3 are the same. Plus 2y equals 9. And now we're going to figure out what y is first, and then we need to find x. Okay, so we distribute the 5, negative 5y minus 15, plus 2y equals 9. 5, negative 5y plus 2y is negative 3y. I'm going to add 15 to both sides as well. And 15 equals 24, divide by negative 3 y is equal to negative 6, no, negative 8. Negative eight. Since y is negative 8, I can plug it right there for that y and figure out what x is. x equals negative and negative 8 minus 3. x equals positive 8 minus 3. x equals 5. And the solution to the system is what? Uh, 5 and 8. Negative 8. 5 comma negative 8. 5 is x, negative 8 is y. That's the solution. Purely coincidence, though. Purely coincidence. Does it doesn't have that one day I'll figure it out? No. <laughs> don't don't go still, down that I road. I can still believe. Don't go down that <laughs> road. It'll be a waste of your time. Just a coincidence. OK? Uh, well, I mean, that like that does it. Like, every time you can say, like, oh, look, x is this, so I'll take that and replace the x in the other equation with that. Okay. The only other thing that might happen is, well, it doesn't tell you that. Beginning. So let's say that I have the equation 2x plus y equals 9 and 4x minus y equals negative 15. Let me remind you of the previous three examples and what, what they gave us and what they're not giving us. In the first, equa uh, the first uh, system of equations, they said this y is the same as 2x minus 1, so you can replace that y with 2x minus 1. Here they're saying y is the same as x minus 7, so you can replace this y with that x minus 7. Here they're saying x is the same as negative y minus 3, so you can replace that x with a negative y minus 3. So here, how is this one different? It's not just saying, like, here's y, here's what x is. So, it's no problem. Can we take one of these equations, manipulate it, rewrite it a little bit, so that it does say that, so it does say y equals this, and x equals that? Now, it's up to you. Like You can, you can sol use this one and solve for y, or solve for x. You can use this one and solve for y, or solve for x. It's just really which one looks like it's the easiest one to solve for. Which one is it? Do you want to solve for this x, or this y, or this y, or this x? Which one do you think would be the easiest to get by itself? top one, and what, get, what, which one would you get by itself? It looks like it's easier to get x by itself or y by itself. Well, y. Look, it's just y. And it's positive, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like it's pretty an easy picking. So if we take 2x plus y and we want to get y by itself, how do we do that? You subtract 2x. You got it. Subtract 2x. 
y is equal to negative 2x plus 9. Okay, we, got, we got it. We got y by itself. y is negative 2x minus, or 2x plus 9. Negative 2x plus 9. What are we going to do with that negative 2x plus 9? Right. Here's the important thing when you're substituting. Right. When I go back to plug this in, it's very important that I don't just plug it back into this equation. I'm just plugging it back into itself because that's the equation we just used. Right. So we want to plug it into the other equation for y. So 4x minus. Okay. Here's what y is: negative 2x plus 9 equals negative 15. Distribute this negative. We get plus 2x minus 9. Okay. 4x plus 2x, 6x minus 9 equals negative 15. Add 9 and 6x is equal to negative uh, 6. x equals negative 1. We need 5 by 6 on both sides. And look at that. That's convenient. Y is equal to negative 2x plus 9. I just plug in my x that I found. Y equals negative 2 times negative 1 plus 9. Y equals negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 plus 9. Y is 11. So the solution, negative 1, 11. So are you guys going to the assembly? Yeah.